Mr. Secretary, uh, today and, and when I've heard you previously, you've seemed quite clear that you believe uh, that we should make no further cuts in the defense budget beyond those which have already been enacted. Is, is that true? Correct. Does the President share your view on that? He does. So as Commander-in-Chief, I think it's important uh, for him to be able to speak out and also say we've gone as far as we can go. We've gone to the edge, to use your, your words, uh, and that no more cuts should come from the defense budget. Um, I'm hopeful we can have bipartisan agreement on that. General Dempsey, you used a word that caught my attention in your uh, statement. You said if there are further cuts, there could be irrevocable damage to our military. Now, a fair number of uh, folks here, I think, have the opinion that, okay, so our cuts either enacted by the super committee or through sequestration, we can always make up for that the next year and put some more money and, and everything will be okay. Explain to, to us what you mean by irrevocable and how can a cut do damage that can't be corrected the next year with some extra money? It comes down to what I described in the statement, Congressman, as the core of our profession, and that is the men and women who comprise it and who we develop as leaders. You know, we are the, the military. We consider ourselves to be the preeminent leader development institution in America, and I think we have a case to make that. If, if some of the cuts occur in the magnitude and, more important, with the targets as they're described right now in sequestration, and it causes us to riff, this, is, this goes back to the notion of do we have the time to reduce the force over time responsibly and predictably? Um, that's one thing. If we don't, if we begin to have to riff to meet the budget targets imposed by sequestration, we lose that core. We've seen this happen in the 80s, a correction in the 90s right after Desert Storm where we, had a, we created a bathtub, if you will, of captains and majors who exited the service. And then when we had to regrow the Army by 65,000 as a result of uh, the conflicts in Iraq and Afghanistan, where we suffered was not in the basic rifle infantrymen. We can grow them. We can grow them in 20 to 30 weeks. You can't grow a captain, a major, a lieutenant colonel, a sergeant major in 20 to 30 weeks. And if we don't, if we're not careful with this and we have a migration of that talent out of the Army, that's irrevocable for probably 10 or 15 years. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Secretary, let me turn back to you for, for, for one other question. Uh, this series of hearings has been about 9-11. Uh, Ten years ago, it, you, one could see a clear trend towards terror. The method of attack was, was certainly unexpected. It is undoubtedly true we will face unexpected things in the next 10 years uh, that will be affected by our actions here. Uh, one of the concerns I have is that, that it, it's for things like research and development, uh, those kind of, of not specific programs, you don't know how they're going to play out, and yet they lay the foundation for, for our future. As, as you all go through implementing what's already been passed, uh, and, and hopefully that's it, tell me how, how you take into account preparing for uncertainty because it seems to me that that is absolutely central to national security in a complex world. Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, in, in all of the past planning that's gone into uh, developing uh, the defense budget, uh, the one thing that everybody agrees is that, uh, that no one has uh, accurately predicted the future and, the, and uh, has anticipated the kind of uh, attacks and crises we've had to confront. Uh, you can identify kind of large areas where you would expect that uh, a future crisis might lie. But the reality is that uh, if we're going to have a strong defense, we've got to be prepared to react to a surprise. We've got to be prepared to react to something we're not expecting. Uh, and that's the reason, I mean, I, I think you've hit on something very important, which is we need to have research and development. We need to have those kind of creative areas of the department that look at those kinds of potential problems, that develop approaches to those kinds of develop, uh, those kinds of, of possible crises in the future. Uh, that, I mean, to have that kind of imaginative look at where, where we will be, what kind of potential enemy will we confront, 
that gives us the capability to begin to design a truly agile force that can respond to those kinds of threats. That's, that's the difference, and I need that. I can't lock in, you know, that there are three or four threats out there and we're just going to deal with those. We've got to be flexible and agile enough to respond to any threat wherever it comes from.